Thanks for that intro, Bill. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, uh, great to see everybody. Um, man, this is the best time of year. Excited to, uh, to open up training camp tomorrow with our guys. Uh, we've had a great summer. Um, the players have been fantastic. Uh, they've really been that way since we got back in January. Each part of our off season, uh, they've handled themselves with great maturity, been extremely competitive. Individually, I feel like we've made a lot of strides um, as you get a chance to see some of these guys here as, as we open up training camp. I uh, really like uh, the position they put themselves in physically to be ready to go compete this training camp. Uh, excited about the continuity and, and what we have coming back as a staff. Um, you know, look, over the course of our three years, uh, being able to maintain uh, the core group of our guys. And I think that's allowed us to continue to grow in our culture, uh, continue to grow in our schemes. and. Uh, build on, on the trust that we've built over the first two years uh, within our, uh, our program, uh, players and coaches alike. So excited to kick it off with these guys here tomorrow and, and uh, start this training camp. And, uh, you know, it's a long month. Uh, it's, a, it's a process throughout the course of the season. It's a process during the course of training camp to get ourselves ready to go play here in 31 days when we open up in Nashville. So I'll open up with, uh, for questions. Questions? We'll start with David up front here. Just how do you describe how would you describe uh, what this program is right now compared to the program that you took over? I just I think we got uh, first of all like cornerstone pieces of who we are. The foundation's been set, it's been laid. Uh, great trust and, and uh, accountability inside of uh, our walls. Uh, you know our players, just their their daily habits, who they are, what they're about, how they compete uh, individually with themselves and collectively as a group too. Um, we've come a long ways in a short amount of time. Our roster, you know, I, I've said it before, you know, that first fall we had 65 scholarship players. Um, you know, we're close to 85. We got uh, real depth, real competition, really at every position. And that's true of our veterans that are here. There's a lot of young guys, 18 of them, that were with us during the course of spring ball. I expect them to be a much more mature and complete player when we step on the field tomorrow, but certainly as we grow during the course of training camp. There's just great competition everywhere. Um, our athleticism, uh, strength, all of those things have continued to improve our functional movement. Um, we're continuing to take strides, um, but this is the time of year where you gotta go out and earn it every day. A reminder, we'll get a mic to you, Rob, then Ben. Coach, you just mentioned it, but You've been in this business as a player and coach for a long time. How much of a benefit is it to have the continuity on the staff like you've had? I mean, you've got a couple guys leave, but nobody for lack of a much right head, head job in the NFL. Yeah. How, how much of a benefit is that in your culture? Well, you know, the, the people that we've been able to promote have been within the building, within those position units. They have connection and relationships with those players. So it's not like you're starting over from scratch even when you promote somebody. Um, you know, I think it, it's really important uh, inside of your program. It's, uh, you know, at any point, you know, um, but it's certainly important where we took this program over in, in trying to build something. Um, at every phase, every single year, we've never had to, you know, completely reset. We've been able, been able to continue. You know, we come off of, of last year's season, they come back at, in late January. Man, it's about, okay, this is where we were, this is who's back, this is how we grow. You know, as a, as a staff, continuing to push on our schemes, fine tune who we are and, and what we want to do. Our players continuing to grow in, in every facet from, you know, our strength program to, you know, what we're doing schematically and fundamentally. It has allowed us to continue to grow really quickly and, and uh, I don't think you can, understate that part of it as we've grown here over the first two years and heading into year three. Being up front. Josh, how have you seen Aaron Beasley's leadership grow over the course of this offseason and, and what leadership have you already seen Keenan Peely be able to provide for you all? Yeah, uh, both of those guys have dramatically continued to improve their bodies, uh, I think functionally. Um, you know, the, the traits that we're looking for, they've continued to improve that. I think you guys will see that as you get a chance to watch some of, of the practice. Uh, Bees is a guy that hadn't played a lot of football, grow, grows into a role on the football field, you know, plays at a really high level, uh, certainly the Orange Bowl last year. And as that has taken place, been able to um, be very intentional in how he wants to grow as a leader too. He's part of uh, our leadership council. Uh, He's got great influence inside the linebacker room, but really across our defense and our football team too. He's continued, continued to grow just in his maturity outside of the game. Um, 
you know, the, the middle of that defense, it's important that you have great leadership uh, and that they're willing and able to communicate at a really high level. That's off the field and that's during the course of, of play as well. Keenan Peely, uh, a guy that's got great maturity, uh, athletic, athletic traits that we were looking for. Um, he's the guy that in spring ball was just trying to figure out what we're doing schematically, how he needs to improve every day. This summer took a huge leap uh, in you know, having command of, of the guys around him and the maturity of both of those guys, I think will show itself as, as we go through training camp and as we get into the season. Adam here on the right, then Austin on the left. <clears throat> Josh, when you look back at things that went well or poorly in the season, what things are traced back to Paul Camp? In other words, uh, what are some examples of like good seeds and bad seeds that are planted in Paul Camp that you can see throughout the, the season? Well, you want you want good seeds that, that are planted. Um, you know, practice habits and, and how that affects your health during training camp and during the course of the season. Uh, the ability to to play each play independently, no matter what happened on, on the previous play playing harder than your opponent, even though you're competing against yourself during the course of, of training camp. Uh, how you take care of the ball, how, how do you go attack the ball on, on the defensive side of it. Um, you got to constantly grow in this game. You're resetting in each phase and every off season. Uh, this is you know the last quarter of, I say it's our off season, obviously we're heading into the, uh, the season. Uh, it's, it's important that, uh, that you develop the habits, you devo develop the, the leadership. Uh, we try to be intentional with that even during the course of, of training camp, continuing to give those guys ownership. They got to go be problem solvers uh, when we get out and, and uh, we're playing against an opponent, you know, next fall or this fall. And, and uh, so you got to put those guys in a position to, to do some of those things. We all know Cooper Mays is your guy at center, but behind him, kind of where do you feel like you are? I know you all were working towards that in the spring, trying to get some guys ready. Where do you feel like you are heading into fall camp and then overall health of the team? What's that like? Well, I, I do think there's great competition on the offensive line. Uh, that's true at the tackle position. Uh, you talk about Coop, his stability, what he brings to the offensive line. Guys played at a really high level. He's another guy that's continued to develop his ownership and leadership inside of our program. Really love, love what he's done all off season. Um, you know, that backup center spot will be a competition. We've got multiple guys that will be competing for that. Um, some young guys in our, in our program, also Parker Ball has been here for a while. <clears throat> That's one of the things, just personnel-wise, that we got to figure out here as we get, uh, get through the next couple of weeks. Uh, the health of our program, uh, as far as our individuals, we're in a pretty good spot. Um, there's one guy that, uh, that won't be with us this fall, Pat Garland, um, just from the injury last fall hasn't gotten himself in a position where he's cleared. Uh, it's not because he hasn't been putting in the work, it's just him and the process that, uh, that he's had to go through with that injury. Um, he'll be a part of our program, um, but uh, will not be playing this fall. Rick up front and then back to David. Just talking about Dante Thornton, if you could go back and kind of remind us what you liked about his tape when you guys first brought him in and what you're expecting from him kind of coming into this fall camp after a summer and spring workouts. Yeah. It, uh, Great length, uh, natural hands, great route runner. Um, you know, had one of the fastest GPS uh, speeds in, in, uh, in the transfer portal. Um, I love just how he's approached it coming into our program. Uh, wanted to earn it. He's become a relentless worker. Um, he cares about you know, his performance and how he prepares in a really good way. Um, he spent a lot of time understanding and trying to grow inside of our offense really quickly. Uh, looking forward to seeing him this, this fall. Um, you know, there's there's great competition, some flexibility at the wide receiver spot. Um, looking forward to see uh, how that kind of unfolds here during the course of training camp. Uh, Josh, for you personally, what is it like to be in charge of the program now, coming off of year six wins, you know, versus taking over a program NCAA issues that had and a three-man team and all those things? What is that like for you personally? Yeah, uh, the NCAA being. Stuff being behind us uh, is huge for us as a, as a program, as much as anything on the recruiting side of it. Uh, I said that probably a week ago at, at media days as well. As far as you know, <clears throat> how I'm different or, or what's different about the program, well, you got you know two and a half years of, of built up trust and, and chemistry with your staff and your players. But at the end of the day, how we approach and how I approach every single day. It's not any different, man. Uh, this is a highly competitive game. Uh, you got pl great players and coaches that we're going to be going against all fall long. Uh, you got to reset and go earn it every single day. So 
Uh, we have a, a real sense of urgency inside of our program. It starts with me, a uh, sense of, of competitiveness and, and uh, drive. At the end of the day, there were a lot of great moments last year. None of that stuff comes with us. At the end of the day, last year, there were a lot of goals that we didn't reach. Uh, this group's been really intentional about pushing forward and, and putting ourselves in a position to go chase some of those things. Brian on the second row and then <clears throat> Noah. What does a productive camp look like for Joe and Nico, and does it differ when these first two of them? Well, yeah, a little bit because they're, they're different in, as far as the, the stages that they're at inside of the quarterback room, understanding our offense and fundamental, um, you know, how we want them to play. Um, both of them, I expect to compete and lead at a, at a, at a high level. Uh, I, I think it's really important that those guys have great energy and urgency and that transcends not just through our offense, but also through our football team. Um, for all of our players, <clears throat> this is a game that's never going to be perfect. And being able to reset from one play to the next, I think, is one of the most important traits that you have as a competitor and as a player in this game. Uh, so for those two guys, being able to do that and then master what we're doing offensively will be really important. What about the people that you had to step up for you guys last year? Do you think that just kind of uh, he's a returning veteran in that group or you kind of see him? Yeah, somebody that probably um, puts as much time or more time than, than anybody inside of our program into the extra work. Uh, you can come up here late at night and see him on the jugs. Um, he cares um, and he prepares the right way. He's continued to grow in, in what we're doing uh, and understanding our schemes, continue to heighten his fundamental and technique at the, at the wide receiver position. That was a huge part of why he took advantage of the opportunity when said went down last year and played at a really high level anticipate him uh, continuing to do that and having a great training camp. Um, you know, really excited about what he's done in, in a short amount of time with us. Vince up front, then Wes. Josh, how do you feel about your pass rush options at that Leo spot? I mean, I know uh, Pierce Jr. And, and Joseph Splash for you. There's plenty of other guys there. How do you feel about that group? Yeah, uh, one of the position groups, just dating back to my earlier comments about Real depth, real competition, length, athleticism, some of the traits that we're looking for off the edge and, and some of that inside too with some of the guys that we've brought in. <clears throat> looking forward to great competition. Uh, looking forward to, to us continuing to develop in, in our ability to affect the quarterback uh, and not doing that with pressures all the time, but being able to do it with the four guys up front. You guys know that at the end of spring, I felt like we made some, some real strides in that. A lot of our guys that uh, were back uh, in a part of our program. We've had a couple of new guys that came in here in uh, late May, early June too. Uh, anticipate those guys learning, uh, continuing to learn what we're doing, but playing with great technique and, and competing for a spot. At the end of the day, right now, this time of year, you got to show that uh, that you can master what we're doing and go take a job. It, it's it's your your job to, to prove that you're in play at a championship level. And, and once that happens, then we got to find a role for those guys anticipate those guys doing that during the course of training game. Joe, sort of the same situation there, but with the corners, you know, there's a lot of bodies there, a lot of guys that come back, some new guys to the mix that look pretty talented. What, what's, what, what's the situation there, competition-wise, and, and, you know, what's it like to have that sort of many options there? Well, you know, the five guys that came in in January, really excited about, you know, their athleticism, their physical traits. They were super mature in the way they competed and handled themselves on the, on the field and off the field. I anticipate those guys, <clears throat> excuse me, after, you know, going through an off season, going through spring ball and having time, having an opportunity to kind of digest all that and go back through some installs this summer. Man, when we hit the ground, being a much different player, while still understanding that they're going to have to continue to grow throughout the course of, of training camp. Uh, the vets, uh, a year ago, we were kind of nicked up during the training camp. We got nicked up during the course of the season. We need those guys to stay healthy. We need them to be on the field. We need them to compete and get those reps. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't be the player that, that you need to be if you're not practicing during this time of year. And so um, we need all those guys playing and competing here during the course of training camp for them to be their best. It's one of the positions where there's great competition. Every position on our, in our program, you got to go earn it here during you know the next two and a half, three weeks of training camp, prove that you're going to play at a championship level. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the competition at that spot. To the back uh, with Casey, then Paige. Coach, you mentioned how this program, the difference when you first took it over to now, but what about you personally, the emotions that you feel when you look back two years ago, how is it different today than it was now going into the start of all? Well, it's 
different. Uh, I kind of touched on this uh, with the earlier question. Uh, it's different in that you got you know two years of experiences with the majority of your roster. Uh, you got a culture that's built. There's continuity. There's also an understanding from your players. They know exactly what they're getting into each phase of, of our off season. They know what training camp's going to look like. Um, you know, our, our staff's been um, you know been able to maintain that intact uh, for the most part. And, uh, now you're just able to go out and compete on, on a daily basis. As much as anything, I think that's the thing is that, you know, don't have a lot of issues with our guys. Uh, they do a phenomenal job on the field, outside of, uh, of this building, in the classroom. Uh, it's truly about uh, us individually and collectively becoming our best and, and being very pointed when we come in here that we're going to enjoy what we're doing, have a lot of fun, but also compete at an elite level. Yeah, emotionally being able to reset from play to play, uh, master the concepts that we have in all three phases, play with great fundamentals and technique, uh, being a consistent competitor, show that you're going to play uh, harder than your opponent for 60 minutes. That's every day when you get on the grass and, um, you know, be a great teammate too. And, and uh, for the guys that, you know, have great leadership roles, and that's not just the guys on our leadership uh, council, but make sure that those guys are continuing to grow in that too. That's going to show up during the course of the season. Go back to David here. Uh, Josh, you look back from the end of the season to now. What have been some of your favorite moments with this team uh, over the last you know, seven some months? Since uh, the off season started. Yeah. Well, for me, I, I love being on the grass with them. So what we did during the course of spring ball, uh, for me, I uh, love having an opportunity to kind of reset and enjoy uh, time with them uh, outside of the game too. So uh, that can be the guys coming over to my house uh, during the course of the summer, um, me beating them up on the, on the basketball court, um, you know, the uh, you know, softball tournament that we had. Um, you know, I love those team building uh, moments as well. And at the end of the day, like today, man, um, they walk up the stairs and we get a chance to have a conversation about, you know, what training camp's gonna look like. You can feel the excitement, the energy, and it's just a daily interaction with this group. It, it's, I love being around these guys and they love being around each other too. Patrick did raw. Coach, you've known Joey for a long time, obviously, him stepping in the coordinator role. Has there been really any difference in him? How do you think he sort of handles him stepping in that? No, I, I mean, uh, obviously uh, his, you know, he's going to have to address the offense at, at times and, um, you know, chose him because he got great trust in him. We've been together a long time, uh, philosophically uh, very similar, um, you know, see the game through the, the same type of lens. And it's been a seamless transition. Our players have great trust in him and, and uh, excited about, you know, what he's done up until this point. Coach, obviously it wasn't ideal at the time, but how big of a boost or a jump start for Joe do you think it was to be able to start the last game where things are in the bowl game? Well, for all of the guys, Joe included, that had an opportunity to, you know, play late in the year, that could have been Vandy when guys, we had a few guys nicked up um, to, to the bowl game. Um, and that experience, it, in some ways, it is a springboard to the 23 season. It gives all those guys great confidence in, in what they had done up until that point to go play that way when given the opportunity. Uh, for Joe, nobody was surprised that he played that way inside of our program. We had seen the way that he had worked and competed and how he had continued to grow, um, you know, as a person, but also as a player um, and uh, anticipated him playing that way. Uh, at this point, um, you know, what happened, you know, in January or December has nothing to do with, you know, where we go and, and uh, those guys being focused on continuing to grow every day, I think is really important. Adam in Austin. Your first season obviously was, was a good year. Second season was, was a great year. Looking back, do you really see a big difference between those two teams and those two seasons? When you say see a difference, are you talking about like in the personnel? Are you talking about the results? Did you, did you look at those two teams and think this one, this one's really going to be far better than the previous year? Yeah, in this game, you got to go out and, and go take it every Saturday, man. There's there's nothing given. So you, you got to be mature enough to, to reset and, and handle everything that comes at you. That's play to play, that's day to day, and that's week to week. And um, the difference in year two and year one was continued growth and understanding in, in what we're doing. Um, you know, a lot of players that were back, 
Uh, our roster uh, continued to improve. We had more depth in year two. Uh, continuity with our staff allowed us to continue to push forward in a positive way. Um, I think, you know, the continued growth and accountability, you know, trust inside of our walls, love and respect for each other and, and the program and, and how we attack every single day. The continued growth in those areas show up in, in the performance and shows up in the scoreboard that everybody sees. Everybody, every program around the country does all the big things. It's the little things that add up to, to being the difference. Um, those are the things that our coaches and players got to be focused on here during the course of training camp. They've been that way. We've continued to grow this off season, um, but you don't take anything for granted. You got to continue to grow in all those areas. Two years ago, it's been referenced a lot of here today. And, and when I think back to two years ago, it was a spring practice that, you know, had like some of us out there running the linebacker for you. Like, <laughs> how different is that room? You were, you were coming off the edge, not playing no, linebacker. No, no. Come on, man. I couldn't scratch the two. Um, but how different is that room in particular? And, and what kind of job has, has Brian done, you know, in that room and kind of recruiting it and then building that room kind of? What he wants out of it. Yeah, length, ath athleticism, um, accountability every single day, growth inside of the meeting room, understanding scheme, um, not just running around sideline to sideline, but understanding what your, your job is and what your keys are and being able to play with fundament fundamentals and the right steps. Um, we were really thin year one. We've added length, athleticism, um, more competition. Uh, you know, that showed up. Um, you know, on defense snaps, it showed up in our special teams a, a year ago as well. BJ's done a great job of, of recruiting that room and, and uh, recruiting what we need to that room too. Two more, Reese and Vince. Uh, Coach, obviously we're worried about this team, but how much do you keep up with your BFLs who are in the NFL? And how much pride do you have on how Dan Hyde is succeeding in training camp through the night? Yeah, um, do keep up with them. Obviously, it's tough to have a ton of conversations in the middle of training camp. Said all those guys. Um, guys that have played for us and guys that I've gotten to know uh, that played here before uh, I got here. Sent all those guys a good luck to as, as they were getting ready for training camp. Uh, excited to see their success, uh, their growth, you know, for the guys that are going in the league for, for year one. I know there's a lot of anticipation, uh, some nervousness just because you're going into something that you haven't been in uh, yet. Um, but, you know, what those guys have done, how they grew, also how they played. I'm really excited to see the success of, of those guys that just went into it, but the success of all those BFLs. And, um, you know, excited to see those guys go play on Sundays and make a lot of plays. Josh, can you share what they brought to the table? A couple of your younger coaches, Coach Aimlin and uh, Kelsey Pope also, since they took over their full-time role. Yeah, great energy. Um, you know, they're, they're dynamic personalities that uh, do a great job of building relationships in the recruiting realm. Uh, they uh, have complete understanding of what we're doing offensively. They're great teachers in the room. They connect with the players. They're able to, to meet the players where they're uh, at and help them grow to where we need them to be. Um, you know, I think, you know, in every way inside of our program, uh, they've continued to help us push forward. And, and uh, two great young coaches that uh, we love having in the building. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll continue with.